Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Bushcraft Dave. Today, I'm going to be doing some actual bushcraft. So I've got a little piece of my in-laws back garden which has got loads of trees in and stuff um, that I've been given a little bit of free rein on. So let's just have a quick look around and you can see some of the stuff that I've got to play with. This is the area that I'm going to try and just sort of clear up and make a little bit of a, a woodland little camp. But um, there's quite a, a bit of other sort of wooded space down here um, that I can also make use of some of the bits of tree from. Um, I've already got a whole load of branches that were kindly cut down um, the last time somebody was in to sort out all the trees. Um, I've got some, I've already got some logs ready so I can start building fires and stuff like that. Only, only small fires, I'm not going to do anything crazy other smaller bits that I can use to start the fires off and yeah the plan is to use this area here that I'm just clearing a bit more of the the tree from so I've kind of got a, a, a much nicer area to work with it'll still be fairly well disguised from the garden so um, you know it's my own little space which is quite cool um, but yeah I'm gonna set up a very simple very humble little camp um, today really I'm only gonna start off by clearing a bit of a space so that I can set up a little fire and I'm also going to build um, a firewall so I'm going to have a look around see what bits and pieces I've got I might need to salvage some things from some other trees but we'll see what we've got I'm going to set up a bit of a space for a fire and a firewall that's going to be my starting point but I might also whilst I'm here build something for the newest member of the bushcraft family so I think it's about time I introduce you Come and meet her. Hiya, Penny. So this is Penny. She is a rescue dog. We rescued her um, as part of a whole, whole host of other dogs that were rescued. Um, P Penny is from Bosnia. She's been with us now for about three and a bit weeks. She's really settled into the family and she's got the most hugely expressive ears in the world. But hopefully you can kind of notice that she's a bit of a border collie. But if you have a look at her legs, I think she just wants to see the camera. If you look at her legs, she's got really short legs. So we think she is a cross between a border collie and a corgi which I believe is known as a borgy. So anyway, she'll hopefully be joining me on some adventures going forward. She's only just getting used to coming out for a few walks and she's still a bit wary of sheep and things like that. So we're gonna take it nice and steady, but hopefully Penny will be joining us on some walks, won't you Penny? Yeah, she's on a long lead in the back garden. So she's got quite a bit of rain to move. And that's Penny. So I think what I'm going to do, Penny, is I'm also going to try and build you an outdoor kennel or shelter. How's that sound? Not bothered, is she? <laughs> but yeah, Penny's come to join us. Um, she's hopefully going to have a lovely life with us. Welcome Penny to the Bushcraft family. Bushcraft Penny.
Okay, so I've finished building the firewall as, as high as I really want to do it right now. I could try and build it higher, but looking at the wood that I've got, I haven't really got stuff that's perfectly suitable for what I want to do. So let's just have a quick look at what I've done and I'll give you some of my, my thoughts about what I've done. I know that this is not brilliant, all right? Um, I know that really there should be not really much in the way of gaps there at all. I know I've got some gaps. Um, so that in terms of restricting breeze coming through and, and for the heat to escape and things like that, I know it's not perfect, but you know, I'm just trying things out. This is the first time I've ever built a firewall, so a little bit of credit, please, um, for even attempting it and getting something vaguely close. One of the other things that I've, um, I've ended up having to use is just whatever pieces of wood that I had lying around. So with hindsight, one of the things that I would have done is maybe make use of some of the the trees that are already here um because some of this woodland needs thinning out a little bit anyway and maybe taking off some of the the branches and things that are a bit straighter so that when i lay them across the firewall i have got um a better chance at having some straight pieces of wood which would mean that because they're straighter i'm less likely to have gaps and actually when you look at it from this side if I go down a bit so you get a better angle, let me get down. If you look at it from this angle, it's not like there's loads of gaps in there. There's some, but there's not loads. So I'm relatively happy with that. One of the things that, with hindsight, I would do differently is the initial stakes that I put into the ground to sort of put all of the other logs in between. I would have wanted to make sure that those were straight to begin with. Some of them were a little bit kinked, which means that when I was trying to drive them into the ground, I wasn't able to get the full force vertically down into the ground to, to get them a bit deeper. But, all in all, I'm pretty pleased with that. So yeah, I've got um, a couple of stakes at either side, which I've tied up with a bit of um, 550 paracord, as tight as I can, just to keep these in place, so hopefully they won't move about. Stakes are originally driven into the ground, the wood placed in between them. And actually what's really good is from, from this side, it doesn't particularly look that tall, but on the other side, it's actually just a little bit lower down. And when I um, dig out some of the turf from this side, just to get rid of the, the initial bit of grass and give myself a little bit of a space for a fire, the fire's gonna be a lot further down and hopefully the heat will just reflect nicely. I've got the wall on the other side, so I'm kind of trying to keep the the heat from the fire um, fairly well contained. And if I show you from just the other end of the garden, which is one of the things that I was wanting to make sure when I was building something like this, that hopefully it's not going to stand out like a sore thumb. Hopefully you can see the firewall there. So it's not going to sort of have too much impact on the garden which is quite cool. Um, but other than that, I'm really happy with that. My next phase now is to dig out the, the fire pit behind there. Um, I will in, eventually want to put some stones around the outside. I'm gonna have a bit of a, I don't wanna take anything off the stone walls, obviously. So I'm gonna have a bit of a look around, see what there is knocking around. Um, it might even be that, just cause I happen to be in a garden, um, there might be some paving slabs and things like that that are not being used that I could just put around the outside. So I know there's no danger of any fire spreading. Um, but certainly to begin with, by just digging myself a little pit out, I might even line it with some bigger logs just on the outside. So hopefully we shouldn't get any spread. But that's for the next time. See you in a bit. Welcome back. Um, Day two of me just trying to sort of create a bit of a bushcraft shelter. Um, I was thinking about, I was musing during the night about it how, and wanted to make it clear that like a lot of what I'm doing at the minute is not like pure bushcraft. Um, I'm gonna dig my fire pit in a bit. I'm gonna use some of the tools I've got. I've got a knife, I've got a folding saw, I've got an ax, but seen as in this occasion I happen to be somewhere where there is a shed and there is some tools that I can use 
I'm probably going to use a spade to just dig off the top surface where I'm going to uh, build a fire just down here. Um, like normally, I, if you were going to do a bushcraft shelter in the woods, you wouldn't have a spade with you. You might have a little compact spade or a trowel or you know something like that. Or I could use an axe to try and cut a bit of a wedge in a stick to try and use that. But do you know what? I'm here. I'm going to save myself some time. So disclaimer: I will not be <laughs> fully using f full on bushcraft stuff. But uh, the plan today is I'm going to dig out a little fire pit here. I'm going to have a bit of a scavenge just to see what sort of stones I can find that might be able to go around the edge of the fire pit. And I'm then going to make myself a little fire. I'm going to make myself a cup of hot chocolate um, because I'm feeling the need. And I might even make myself a quick little meal on my trangier. So I set up a little fire, get my trangier on the fire, which will be a bit, a bit different and we'll see how that goes. But yeah, looking forward to it. And let's see what I end up making this time. So with a bit of brute force and just using that stick, um, no other tools used, um, got myself a pit. Now I'm um and ah in about whether I actually just line the bottom of that with a couple of stones and set my fire up on there. That's what I'm thinking at the minute. Let's have a look around, see what I can find.
Oops. In fairness, I did get distracted going to get a fork. I did run. Whew. Remember, keyword here, caramelised. I've never cooked with the Trangia on the fire before. So it's quite exciting to see what happens. I think what we've learnt what happens is it can cook far too fast. Right, they're obviously cooked. Let's get that pan off. Right then. Next job, put kettle on. Right then, um, bacon sandwich. This is not bacon sandwich. With hindsight, I shouldn't have <laughs> forgotten my fork and had to run and go and get it. Because um, I imagine I have overcooked this. I think you can tell from the colour of it. However, For my first meal, excuse me. However, for my first meal, cooked on my fire pit, behind my firewall, in my little bushcrafty kind of getaway, I'm pretty happy with that. It's all good. Noisy children all around, but yeah, really happy with this. The kettle will boil soon. I'll have a cup of hot chocolate, and then that should be done for the day. Right then, my lovely followers, thank you for joining me today on the first Bushcraft Dave Bushcraft video. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it, something a bit different. Um, it's the sort of thing that I would like to do a few bits more of, um, where time allows and where space allows and when I can get up here to do some more bits and pieces. And there's a few other things that I would like to do. I didn't actually get a chance to do um, a little shelter for Penny, but that is definitely something I can sort out at some point. Um, I did just stick a tarp up in the garden. Um, it didn't rain, but she had a bit of shelter from the sun, which was quite nice. Um, but things like, you know, I'm really happy with my firewall. Um, there's some cool things that I could do with that, like putting a, a stick through the firewall so that it sticks up at an angle and I can then hang things off it over the fire. That'd be quite cool. Uh, but there's other ways to, to do that anyway. Um, there's also things like, for example, I would quite, like now I've got the fire, I've got a little bit of a slope that I can sit on, but I'd quite like to have something a little bit higher up to sit on, so that's something I might try and figure out what I could do, rather than just grabbing a, a deck chair or from the garden, you know what I mean? I'm, I, I'd like this to be as much of a bushcraft little hideaway as possible. Um, enjoyed my bacon sandwich this is not bacon um, that was really nice I did I did burn it um, but Mrs Bushcraft Dave she came down to come and see me just a bit ago and she stole some uh, and she said she really liked it so can't be all that bad can it um, and I've got my hot chocolate that I'm about to delve into and it's been a pretty successful 
few days actually like for my first time doing anything you know I've already learnt a lot for example I've learnt that I've never done a hard day's work in my life um, because as I'm sawing things chopping things yeah my hands and my body couldn't take it so you know it's something that I'm gonna have to get a bit fitter and a bit healthier at in the same way that now for me hiking has become something that you know it's relatively comfortable I'm, I'm pushing myself further and further all the time but it's something that I'm fairly comfortable with this is gonna have to be some a skill that I develop um, and build on so yeah I'm really pleased with what I've managed to do over these couple of days and actually there's there's almost a bit of space that I could fit my OEX Bobcat 110 tier if I leveled things out a little bit and I could actually have my tent and a fire and you know that'd be quite cool wouldn't it um, but other than that I'm going to have to get my brain box going and thinking about when I do come here next what I'm going to do because my fire pit's great and that now gives me a load more opportunities to cook things a little bit different I hope you liked the fact that I still managed to use the Trangia to do it without using the bottom um, element of it, the wind, one of the windproof parts of it, without using the bit that the stove sits in, I was able to just stick the upper windshield straight over the coals. Perfect, absolutely fantastic. So a great way of still being able to cook, but this time using an open fire, absolutely fantastic. Um, a bit thrown together because I could grab stuff from the kitchen, but um, next time I'll try and think about it and, and make sure as much as possible when I'm doing stuff, I'm doing it without needing to grab stuff from the shed and stuff like that, because that would be a bit too cheaty, wouldn't it? Anyway, thinking ahead for next week's video. Um, it's gonna be a Peak District walk. It's one that I recorded absolutely ages ago. Five weeks ago, I think I recorded this. Um, yeah, it's my, myself and uh, my good friend Alexi, who I know from work. Um, going out on two hikes over two days we camp overnight in the middle so you're seeing walk number 20 next week and then the following week you'll see walk number 21 both of those myself and Alexi going out and doing two of the Peak District walks walk number 20 and 21 so next week you'll be seeing walk number 20 which I believe is called the Roaches and Ludd's Church it's been a while but I think that's what it's called other than that thank you so much for joining me and We'll see you in the next one. It's a bit, uh, a bit close, isn't it? Hello. You can't fuck. Can you play? Can you play?